Hello, welcome to everyone for the course on numerical lean algebra and application. Today we are going to have 23rd lecture. Before going to this 23rd lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. As we have seen, Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting, Gaussian elimination without partial pivoting, how the solution gets influenced and how the error could be minimized, we have seen several examples. Also we have seen how Gaussian elimination without pivoting and Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting, how the solution gets affected while doing the numerical computation. Today we wanted to see a very specialized topic, the computation of eigenvalues. All of you knowing very well, the eigenvalues computation is very tricky and find applications in image processing, control systems, statistical applications, measurements, numerical fluid dynamics, numerical weather prediction and so on and so forth. So today we wanted to see how actually the, the eigenvalue competition can be computed for different applications, the so called power method. And also we see how we could compute the largest eigenvalue in magnitude, how we can compute smallest eigenvalue in magnitude and so on and so forth. To begin with, the computation of eigenvalues. There is no best way to find eigenvalues of a matrix. As we have seen from several textbooks and several research articles and several monographs as on date. But there are certainly some terrible ways which should never be tried and also some ideas that do deserve a permanent place. We began by describing one very rough and ready approach, the power method whose convergence properties are easy to understand. What is this power method? What is the background of this power method? How it is helpful in order to find out the largest eigenvalue for a particular matrix? As we have seen from physical situations, by writing the coefficients, we could be able to obtain the matrix. So the ultimate goal is how to solve these matrices and interpret in terms of physics of the problem. The ordinary power method operates on the principle of a difference equation. Difference equation can be obtained from the differential equations and when you discretize at discrete points, we do get a difference equation. It starts with an initial guess, let us say u0 and then successfully forms u1 is equal to a u0, u2 is equal to a u1 and in the similar way a of un is equal to un, a of un is equal to un plus 1 and in general, so if k is the index, we can write it as 
uk plus 1 will be equivalent to a times of uk where a is the coefficient matrix. Each step is a matrix vector multiplication. After k steps, it should produce uk is equal to a power k u naught. Although the matrix a power k will never appear. The essential thing is that matrix multiplication by a should be easy to do. If the matrix is large, it had better be sparse. That means zeros are dominant. Zero elements dominant. Zero elements dominant. Because convergence to the eigenvector is often very slow. Assuming A has a full set of eigenvectors, let us say x1, x2, x3, xn, the vector uk, the vector uk will be given by the usual formula. The eigenvectors weighted by lambda power k uk will be equivalent to c1 times of lambda 1 power k x1, c2 times of lambda power 2 power k x2, like that you have, finally you have cn times of lambda n xn. Suppose the largest eigenvalue lambda n is, is a largest value by itself, there is no other eigenvalues of the same magnitude. So that means you will have less than or equal to, less than or equal to, that means very small, lambda n minus 1, lambda n like this. Then as long as the initial guess u naught contains some component of the eigenvector xn so that cn is not equal to 0, this component will gradually dominate uk. That means we can write it as uk upon lambda nk, this fraction will be equivalent to c1 times of lambda 1 upon lambda n whole power k times of x1, lambda 2 upon lambda n times of k x2, keep on do like this, cn minus 1, lambda n minus 1, upon lambda n whole power k times of xn minus 1 plus cn xn. The vectors uk point more and more accurately towards the direction of xn. Their convergence factor is the ratio r is equal to norm of lambda n minus 1 upon lambda n. It is just like convergence to a steady state 
for a Markovian matrix except now lambda n may not equal to 1. So, that means the value of lambda n minus 1 upon lambda n that will give you what we call the convergence factor as we see over here. Further, the scaling factor lambda k n, this lambda k n prevents u k from going very large or very small when lambda n is greater than 1 when lambda n is less than 1. Often we can just divide each u k by its first component alpha k before taking the next step. With this simple scaling the power method u k plus 1 is equal to a u k upon alpha k with this simple power method u k plus 1 is equal to a u k upon u k converges to a multiple of x n. The scaling factor alpha k will approach lambda n. So, this is the logic behind the algorithm. Now, you can see from this example, let us say that the uk approach the eigenvector 2 over 3, 1 over 3. So, 2 over 3 is if you look at 3 digits 0.667 and here 0.333. When the matrix A is 0 0.9, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.8 is a matrix. So, U1 is, U0 is 1, 0, U1 is 0 0.9, 0 0.1, U2 is 0 0.83, 0 0.17. So, this is increasing, this is decreasing. This is increasing um, this is decreasing and this is increasing and this is decreasing and this is increasing. So on. If R is equal to if R is equal to lambda n minus 1 upon lambda n if r is equal to lambda n minus 1 upon lambda n is close to 1, then convergence is very slow. In many applications, r is greater than 0 0.9. So, this convergence factor is less than actually 0.9. Which means that more than 20 iterations are needed to achieve one more digit. The example had r is equal to 0.7 and it was still much slow and if r is equal to 1 which means mod of lambda n minus 1 upon lambda n is 1. So, that means lambda n minus 1 is equal to lambda n. Then convergence will probably not clear at all. That happens for a complex conjugate pair. So, lambda n minus 1 is equal to lambda bar. So, lambda n minus 1 is equal to lambda n bar. 
there are several ways to get around this limitation and we shall describe three of them. The block power method works with several vectors at once in place of uk. If we multiply p orthonormal vectors by a and then apply Gram-Smith to orthonormalize them, again we will end up with R prime that is equal to norm of that is absolute value of lambda n minus p upon lambda n. We will obtain approximations to p different eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. The inverse power method operates with a of 1 instead of a. A single step is vk plus 1 is equal to a1 of vk which means that we solve the linear system avk plus 1 is equal to vk and save the factors l and u. Now we converge to the smallest eigenvalue lambda 1 and its eigenvector x1 provided lambda 1 is less than or lambda 2. Often it is lambda 1 that is wanted in the applications and then inverse iteration is an automatic choice. Well, there is another concept called shifted inverse power method. The shifted inverse power method is, is the best of all methods. What we do is here, we replace the matrix A by A alpha i. Each eigenvalue is shifted by alpha and the convergence factor for the inverse method will change to R double prime that will be equivalent to absolute value of lambda 1 alpha upon lambda 2 alpha. If alpha is a good approximation to lambda 1, R double prime will be very small and the convergence is enormously accelerated. Each step of the method solves A alpha i times of W of k plus 1 will be equivalent to W k. So therefore, you get at the end W k is equal to C1 x1 upon lambda 1 minus alpha all power k plus C2 x2 upon lambda 2 minus alpha all power k like that you will have Cn xn upon lambda n minus alpha all power k. Further, when alpha is close to lambda 1, the first term dominates only once or two steps if lambda 1 has already been computed by another program. For instance, QR factorization. Then alpha in this computed value, the one standard procedure is to factorize A lambda i into LU, where A is the coefficient matrix, lambda is the scalar, 
I is the unit vector, L is the lower triangle matrix, U is the upper triangle matrix. And then solve U x1 is equal to 1, 1, 1, etc. by back substitution. If lambda 1 is not already approximated, the shifted inverse power method has to generate its own choice of alpha. We can vary alpha is equal to alpha k. At every step, if we want to so a alpha, a alpha k i is equal to w of k plus 1 is equal to w k, when a is symmetric, a very accurate choice is a rally quotient. A very accurate choice is the rally quotient. Then let us shift by alpha k. So R of wk is wk times of transpose a wk upon wk transpose of wk. If you look at the tridiagonal and Heisenberg forms, the power method is reasonable only for matrix that is large and sparse. That means very big size, 10,000 by 10,000 and zeros are dominant. When too many entries are non-zero, this method is not desirable. Therefore, we ask whether there is a simple way to create zeros. That is the goal of the following article. It should be said that after computing a similar matrix Q inverse AQ with more zeros than A, we do not intend to go back to the power method. There are much more powerful variants and the best of them seems to be the QR algorithm. The shifted inverse power method has its place at the very end. So, so in finding the eigenvalue or eigenvector. The first step to produce quickly as many zeros as possible using an orthogonal matrix Q if A is symmetric. Then so is Q inverse AQ. No entry can become dangerously large because Q progresses or it reserves the length. To go from A to Q inverse of AQ, there are two main possibilities which, which is being seen. We can produce one zero at every step that is elimination process or we can think with a whole column at once. So for a single zero, it is easy to make use of plane rotation that has cos theta and sin theta in a 2 by 2 clock. Then we could cycle through the, all the entries below the diagonal choosing a at each step it fails to diagonalize A after a finite number of rotations. Since the zeros from early steps will be destroyed when larger entries are created. To preserve the zeros and stop, we have to settle for less than a triangular form. The Heisenberg form accepts one non-zero diagonal below the main diagonal. If a Heisenberg matrix is symmetric, it only has three non-zero diagonals. A series of rotations in the right planes will produce the sexually harassed. A series of rotations in the right planes will produce 
the required zeros. However, the householder found a new way to accomplish exactly the same thing. A householder transformation is a reflection matrix determined by one vector. So we will have this kind of representation. So h is equal to i minus 2 times of v times of v transpose upon norm of a whole square. Often v is normalized to become a unit vector u is equal to u is equal to v upon norm of v. And then h becomes h is equal to i times of 2 into u, u transpose. So in either case, h is both symmetric and orthogonal. Thus, you will have h is equal to h transpose and h is h of 1. Householder plane was to produce zeros with these matrices. And its success depends on the following identity, hx is equal to sigma z. Now let us see the theorem. Suppose z is the column vector 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. And that we call it as a norm of x. And v is equal to x plus sigma z. Then h of then hx is equal to sigma z that is sigma 0 0 0 etc. The vector hx ends in zeros as desired. The proof is to compute hx and reach sigma z. So when you have hx is equal to x minus 2v times of v transpose upon norm of v2. So then it will be simplified it in this fashion. So ultimately you will have this matrix and hx plus sigma z. This identity can be used right away on the first columns of A. So finally you will have q inverse A q is allowed one non-zero diagonal below the main diagonal. That is what we call it as a Heisenberg form. That is one non-zero diagonal below the main diagonal. So therefore, the entry is strictly below the diagonal will be involved. So like this you will have. So at this point, householder matrix H of order n minus 1. So it is embedded into the lower triangular corner of the full size. So it would be like this. So you will have u1 is equal to so 1, 0, etc. all zeros, 0, etc. zeros, h. So that you can write it, this is called u1 inverse. So that is u1 inverse a, u1 is equal to this kind of matrix. Okay. So the first stage is complete and u1 inverse a, u1 has required first column at the second stage. So x1 consists of these last n minus 2 rays and the second three bold shots. Then h2 is also a part of m2. When it is equivalent, so it will be embedded over the matrix. So you can have it. So u3 will take care of the third column for a 5 by 5 matrix. The Heisenberg form is achieved, so it has a zeros. That means it becomes a spare. In general, Q is the product of all the matrices. So the Q is equal to U1, U2, U3, U, U, etc. And the number of operations for required to be complete is order of N3. Now this is not N3, so it will be of N into N into N. So it is N power 3. Let us see this example, how the method works. So, a13 is equal to a31 to 0. So, a13, first row and third element. And third row, first element. Yes, 0. So, x1, x2, x3 is known. 
H is also formed. So embedding H into Q, the result will be like Q inverse Q is tridiagonal. So you'll have Q in this form, and Q inverse Q will be in this form. So recall quickly the power method is normally used to determine the largest eigenvalue in magnitude and the corresponding eigenvector system x equal to lambda h. So how a power method can be defined? Let us see. Lambda and lambda will be the best eigenvalues of the matrix. So this is the condition which needs to be satisfied. So the example is largest eigenvalue in the modulus and the corresponding eigenvectors of the matrix. You have a 3 by 3 matrix using power method. We can start the iteration of using the eigenvector as the initial vector. So let us say if nothing is given, so normally this is the, we do choose 0, 0, 0 or V naught is equal to 1, 1, 1. Then we find that Y1 is equal to this is the vector you do get and this is the Y2 and this is the corresponding V1, corresponding V2. So you will have a Y7, Y8, V7, V8, so and then also you do have a Y9. So at this step, the approximation to the largest eigenvalue in modulus R, so this is the one which we get here. So if you round to three digits, we have now mod of lambda is equal to, the, the approximation eigenvector is this vector. The exact eigenvector is this and this is the vector you do. So, if you shift off the origin, how the solution takes changes to the desired values, power method can be used with a shift of the origin. We know that A and A minus K have the same set of eigenvalues and for each eigenvalue lambda 1 of lambda I of A, we have lambda A minus KL, the eigenvalue of lambda I minus K. So, you will have this method. So, A minus KL of V is A V minus K V, so you will end up with this matrix lambda v minus kv, so lambda minus k into v. Therefore, we subtract k from the diagonal elements of A, then each eigenvalue is reproduced by the same factor and the eigenvectors are not changed. The power method can now be shifted to in this fashion. yk plus 1 is equal to a minus kl times vk and vk plus 1 is equal to yk plus 1 upon mk plus 1. So inverse power method is, the inverse power method is usually more powerful than the power method. The method has the advantage that it can give approximation to any eigenvalue rather than only one to lambda 1 or alpha. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A and V is the corresponding eigenvector, then 1 by lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse corresponding to the same eigenvalue. Choose any non-zero eigenvector, why not? and express it as a linear combination of the vector v1, v2, etc., vn. So applying the power method on A inverse, we have lambda zk plus 1 is equal to A minus 1 yk and yk plus 1 is equal to this thing. This gives an approximation to the dominant eigenvalue in modulus of A inverse. That is the smallest eigenvalue of A. However, one need to find A inverse to find the large, smallest eigenvalue in modulus that is by A inverse. So if you continue like this, that is we can have a A z k plus 1 is equal to y k. So we find z of k plus 1 by solving the linear system of algebraic equations and a normalization is done according to that equation, the coefficient matrix for all the iterations is the same as we see from this uh, equation. So if you introduce a shift of the origin, so then it becomes z of k plus 1 will become A minus Ki inverse Y of K. So the ratio of the convergence of the components tends to 1 by lambda I minus K, where lambda is the eigenvalue of A. So this is that you do get it. So 1 over lambda I minus K will be equal to limit of K tends to infinity lambda K plus 1 or Y of K of R. So let's see this example, find the eigenvalues nearest to 3 for the matrix. So this is the, let's say 3 by 3 matrix. Using the power method, perform 5 iterations. Take the initial approximation as this is the thing. Also obtain the corresponding eigenvector. 
So if you do that, the, magnet, the eigenvalues of A which is nearest to, to 3 is the smallest eigenvalue in magnitude that is A minus 3i, hence it is the largest eigenvalue in magnitude of A inverse. So 3 minus 3i is, A is the coefficient matrix and then A minus 3i over inverse, you do get like this. So using yk plus 1 is equal to these things and you do get the value of estimation over here. So this example demonstrates how iteratively you can find out the different eigenvalues. Similarly, y2 you can write it as 1, 1, minus 1. So, v2 you can write it v, y3, v3, etc., y4, v4, etc. So, ultimately, we will end up the matrix like this. After 5 iterations, we obtain the ratio as like this. Like this, you will get. Therefore, the matrix will be like this, and ultimately, we will get the, the corresponding vectors are. So, 2 plus r minus root 2. That means rational roots are complex roots occur in pairs, so they will have it like this. So similarly, if somebody wants to know the smallest eigenvalue magnitude of the matrix, let us say using four iterations using north, the smallest eigenvalue is the magnitude of A is the largest eigenvalue of A inverse. So A inverse is known, so same procedure can be applied the way which we did it in the previous case. So using yk plus 1 is equal to A inverse of yk for k is equal to 0 to 1. So you write v0 is this, v of y of 1, y of 1, v of 1, y of 2, v of 2, y of 3, v of 3. So then you will have after 4 iterations we obtain the ratio as mu is equal to y of 4 upon v of 3. So uh, r, so you will get this value. Therefore, mu is equal to these things and lambda 1 is equal to these things. Also a minus lambda is, is the required eigenvalue, the corresponding eigenvalue of these things. So, alternatively, we can write the equation 5 as a of y of k plus 1 is equal to v of k, and then we can find out the way which we wrote it earlier lz1 is equal to vk and yk is this k. First, find out this and choose over here. So, we kept in the same six operations as done in the previous case. So, today lecture, what you learned is how eigenvalues can be computed for a 3 by 3 matrix, how eigenvalue. Universe can be computed, these three values, and similarly, we can also find out the eigenvectors. So, therefore, I will stop over here and we will get back in the next lecture. Thank you very much for patiently listening to my lecture today. Thank you.